Good morning. Welcome to the STJC Virtual Worship Service, where our pastor, Reverend Alvin Smith, and First Lady, Reverend B. Smith, and the entire STJC family are so glad that you chose to join us today. We celebrate those who have birthdays and anniversaries this month. November is Diabetes Awareness Month. Healthy eating and exercise are a great way to help manage diabetes. And during this holiday season, we ask that you also remember that we're still in a pandemic. So when around large crowds, please wear your mask. We also encourage you to get vaccinations, the COVID vaccination, and booster shots. We want to wish everyone a happy, blessed, and safe day. And it's our hope that you will enjoy the service and be moved by something that is said, sung, or presented. And as always, feel free to like, share, and comment. The call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of our Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, O Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praises. Cause there's 
nothing like a father's love. Nothing like a father's love. He will be the when times get rough. Be the when the times get rough. Encourage me never to give up. You don't have to give up. A general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, St. James. Our scripture today is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. The Lord said to Moses, If anyone sins and is unfaithful to the Lord by deceiving a neighbor about something entrusted to them, or left in their care, or about something stolen, or if they cheat, their neighbor or if they find lost property and lie about it or if they swear falsely about any such sin that people may commit when they sin in any of these ways and realize their guilt they must return what they have stolen or taken by extortion or what was entrusted to them or the lost property they found or whatever it was they swore falsely about they must make restitution in full and a fifth of the value of it and give it all to the owner on the day they present their guilt offering. And as a penalty, they must bring to the priest, that is to the Lord, their guilt offering, a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them before the Lord and they will be forgiven for any of the things they did that made them feel guilty. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Here with Christ our Savior saith, 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. COVID hit black and brown communities like ours the hardest. I have 12 family and friends that I lost to COVID. It doesn't get easy. You just didn't get a chance to say goodbye. Walking through the ICU, we were seeing brothers, sisters, fathers, daughters of the same family in our unit, just a couple doors down, that were on life support. We often get looked over because we don't have the assets or the finances that others have in their community. My grandfather pastored here. He had to deal with gerrymandering. He had to deal with redlining. We grew up not trusting anything that the government wanted to give us. I was born blind. I'm the product of the child of the Tuskegee experiment. There is a legacy of pain and a legacy of distrust. And so we knew something needed to be done. We needed to do more. Change has to begin in the community, and the church is the heart of the community. This is my community. This is home. Through the collaborative efforts of IEHP and SAC Health, a vaccine clinic was set up right here at our church. I said, you know, it's at the church and it's with IHB. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and that's when she said, sign me up. If we were to survive, we had to come together as one to fight this COVID-19 pandemic. When a community can come together as one and bring others from outside to support, that says a lot. What I experienced here today, it was heartwarming. For me, this is a game changer. Thank goodness for IHP, for St. Paul, for making this happen. I know that it saved lives. The church is not brick and mortar. The church is flesh and blood. In that, when you hurt, I hurt. But when you're blessed, I'm blessed, and we're all blessed. This is the way we should do things in the future. We're in this together. In this caring moment, we are so grateful 
for our partners in ministry. You make a difference. Your gift reduces the poverty footprint, provides meals for seniors, books for children, supplies for teachers, toiletries for veterans, thermometers for neonatal nurses. We care. Help us to expand our network of hope and help. To donate, simply use Givelify or the Zelle app on your cell phone or on your computer. Transfer funds from your account to STJC using our email address. Click the link in the post or send a check or money order to the church. Join us in showing we care by calling friends, family, neighbors, young adults, seniors, and children just to check on them. God bless you and thank you for caring. Hi, I'm Pastor Al. We're so excited because in the midst of darkness, despair, we have a campaign of hope. We have designed a mask saying BDA, brighter days ahead, found in Job the 11th chapter, the 17th verse. For the mask is only $10 plus a dollar for shipping. Won't you join us and spread a message of hope? Father, with John in heaven.
Greetings. Allow me to say thank you to the Reverend Dr. Cephas Martin and the Reverend Cynthia Rogers for an outstanding job teaching and preaching the divine word of God. Our hearts were blessed. Let's pray. Almighty God, we repent of our sins and open our hearts to Jesus. We repent and believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. We receive you into our hearts, body, and soul. Now, forgive us of our sins. Now, use me, Lord, until you use me up. In Jesus' precious name, and the church said, Amen. Our text today is found in Leviticus, the sixth chapter, the second verse, RSV. And it reads, if anyone sins and commits a breach of faith against the Lord by deceiving his neighbor in a matter of deposit or security or through robbery, or if he has oppressed his neighbor, God's word for the people of God and the people of God said, thanks be to God. Only in the darkness can you see the stars. Mm. Only in the darkness can you see the stars. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. pinned those words. A study in 2018 with a group of children in Northern Ireland listed the positive and negatives of cyberspace as reported by them. The study documented the ease of communications with friends and family through social media like FaceTime. Skype and WhatsApp without limitations by distance. You can shop online, a child says, and it's a great way to pass the time. The entire group agreed. The online world is a very entertaining. You can listen to music, watch videos, and play online games with your friends. Cyberspace allows research with search engines like Google. One student said, I like that I can see different places around the world and why they are alike. It gives you an idea of other stuff that is going on around the world. Children may be excited by the bright side of the online world but they are aware of the risk. Children are uncomfortable that their personal information is accessible to people they don't know. And they pointed out several dangers. People can find your digital footprint and work out what website you have visited. People can put a virus on your device. I don't like that you can get hacked. Some children reported, I don't like that other people can be rude and see where you live. They are afraid of being tracked and the risk of cyber bullying. Just think, these are our children. We must protect our children. Today, I would like to focus on hacking. When outside forces breach your physical and personal information, we need to be on guard in our spiritual lives against hackers as well. Hackers gain interest by any means and they open or crack our security wall. Faith hackers 
is a process to gain unauthorized access and destroy one's faith. The ultimate purpose is to cut off the believer's personal relationship with God and block your spiritual growth and maturity. Think with me on the subject. Unhackable faith. Unhackable faith. Verse 2 of our text reads, If anyone sins and commits a breach of faith, the word breach has a very interesting usage in the English language as it pertains to our relationship with God. The word means break, gap, opening, split, or schism. When we continue to follow God's commandments, we maintain our covenant, our agreement with God, and our faith is unhackable. But when we break our covenant with God, we sin and our security wall can be breached and our faith is hacked. Unhackable faith. In the background of our text, we find the author Moses who wrote the book of Leviticus setting forth basic principles about how to approach God and how to live a holy life. Principles that are acceptable even today. Allow me to give three observations of how we repair the breach in our faith wall. Sacrifice, atone, and restore. You see, our personal relationship with God must be unbreachable, unhackable faith. Observation number one, sacrifice. The day of the guilt offerings, Israel protected all kinds of sacrifice. Bird offerings were the most common. Worshippers killed and burned animals on the altar to purify them from their sins. Then there were the grain offerings. They took as a percentage of grain from the harvest, a tithe, to give thanks to God. Grains like flour, barley were used. Peace offerings is another form of sacrifice. They burnt parts of animals as an expression of thanks to God. And finally, guilt offerings. Animal sacrifices for the purpose of purifying the person who had committed a specific sin, such as stealing, lying, unintentional sins, such as making promises they were impossible to keep. Mm. Sounds familiar. Hmm. Help me, somebody. The Bible says to do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Proverbs 21, 3. An eight-year-old boy had a younger sister who was dying of leukemia. And without a blood transfusion, she would die. His parents explained that his blood was a match with hers. And they asked if he would give his sister a pint of blood. It was the only way she could live. He replied, let me think about it overnight. The next day he wanted to donate his blood. So they took him to the hospital and laid him beside his sister. Both of them hooked up to IVs. Praise God, the sister lived. Then the doctor came over to see how he was doing. The boy opened his eyes and asked, how soon until I start to die? Are you willing to sacrifice simply because God asked? Are you willing to sacrifice your life for somebody you love? 
Can you say my sacrifice makes my faith unshakable? Unhacked faith. Observation number two. Atone. Verse seven. And the priest shall make atonements for him before the Lord. The word atonement in Hebrew means to cover, to purge, or to make reconciliation, the bringing of it all together. You see, the sinner pays for his sin and seeks God's forgiveness. God tells Moses there is a breach in your faith. The people fail to follow the commandments of God. Their spiritual security wall was about to fall. And when we sin and disobey God, we lose our covering to fix the wall. God requires payment, a, a ransom that atones for our sin. And that's why the Bible says, for the son of man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life a ransom for humankind. To give his life a ransom for humankind. Mark the 10th chapter, the 45th verse. NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal, a San Antonio, Texas high school graduate, surprised a stranger by paying off the balance of his engagement ring. Mm. Is that not what Jesus did for us? He paid our debt. He gave his life for us. Unhackable faith. Observation number three. Restored. Verses four through five. When one has sinned and become guilty, he shall restore what he took by robbery or he got by oppression. The deposit which has co commended to him or the lost thing that has been found. In other words, you reap what you sow. When you restore to others the damage we cause by our sins, God repays the breach in our wall. We need to Hallelujah, to go to Isaiah, the 58th chapter, the first verse, and it reads, restore the breach in the wall. We've got to cry out and spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. God calls for the watchmen to shout. Are there any watchmen out there? First Peter, the fifth chapter, the 10th verse states, and after you've suffered a while, while the God of grace, who has called to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. While working under his car, a father was trapped as the car fell on him. This is what he thought. He says, I just won't make it. His older son was in the house and his only hope was his eight-year-old son who could use the carjack and save his father. And he did. When JT was asked how he found the strength to lift the car, JT said the angels helped Oh, when life traps us and there are angels in the outfield to help us. Hallelujah. Can anybody thank God for the angels? The angels are there in the outfield to pick us up. The angels are in the outfield to dust us off. God wants to restore his love. And when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. Oh, unhackable, unhackable faith. Are there any believers in the house that can say, I've worked too hard on the spiritual wall. My anxiety, my health, my family, my job, my friends, my finances. You will not hack 
my face. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Unhackable faith. I'm ready to repent of my sin. I'm ready to make my sacrifice. I'm ready to atone for my mistakes. I want to be restored to God by my trials and tribulations, my, my sins. Hallelujah. Won't, hallelujah, block me from the favor of Jesus. I, I wish I had a witness in here. You can't hack my faith. Unhackable, unhackable faith. You ask me why nothing can hack my faith? Because Jesus the Christ was willing to die for me. At last, and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die? Ah, he would devote that sacred head for sinners such as I. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight and now I am happy on the day. Oh, in the words of MC Hammer, you can't hack this. Oh, you can't hack my love. You can't hack my mercy. You can't hack my joy. You can't hack my happiness. Unhackable faith. That's when you're rooted and tied to the Lord. Unhackable faith. That's when your friends, hallelujah, sometimes try to persuade you to do what you know you're not supposed to do. Unhackable faith. Where you stand and say, Jesus, I am with you all the way. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Unhackable faith. Well, I pray we bless someone today. Won't you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, by praying that prayer, we would like you to consider one of four appeals. Conversion, where you make Jesus Christ your personal Savior. Membership, you can place your membership with the STJC in San Antonio, Texas. Rededication. You say, Reverend, I was born in the church. I sang in the choir. I even served as an usher. But somewhere along the line, I felt I outgrew the church. I'm so ready to come back home. We call that rededication. Virtual membership where you can become a virtual member via Facebook, Live, or YouTube. Details are in our website at stjamessa.org or put your information in Messenger. We would love to have you. We want to thank you for your generosity as partners in our ministry. We invite you to sow into our ministry by Giveify, an app on your cell phone. Or Zelle, where you can transfer your funds or mail your check or money order to the church. Details are in the chat. Lastly, we want to thank you for a moment of your time. The Lord willing, we will see you next week, same time, same station. We ask you to join our Brighter Days Ahead campaign, where we witness to someone about our message of hope and life. Wear your mask and get your injection. Let's end COVID. I choose life. B-D-A, Job 11, 17. Details are in the chat. But whatever you do, wear your mask, wear your mask 
wear your mask. God bless you. May the love of the Father, the grace and mercy of the Son, and the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of you now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen.